in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Adam did not fall by mistake. First Peter tells us it was the woman who was deceived, not the man. Let me tell you why Adam fell. Adam fell because according to God's system of love, you have to love unto death to prove that you love. Are you getting what I'm saying? Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Now that the woman had fallen, the man had to follow her because of love. That's why for Jesus to redeem us, he needed to come down and be like us. The same way Adam left his estate to be like his wife. Are you following me now? Are you getting the whole thing? So Adam was not deceived. When he fell, immediately God looked from the heavens and saw the throne that he put man upon empty. And when he saw that throne, it was on account of that. He said, Adam, where are you? He wasn't just saying, Adam, are you naked? What happened now? Don't you know you're an adult? That's not what he was saying. Hallelujah. He saw the throne. It was a spiritual position of dominion. And when he saw it, he said, Adam, where are you? Adam said, I had to follow this woman. And God did not rebuke him because that was a true picture of love. And he said, woman, what have you done? She said, the serpent. Satan was very careful to hear the prophecies that will now come out of the mouth of God. And he said, this and that will happen. And he said, the seed will bruise your head. Now, understand that Satan has known that God is prophetic in his statements. The meaning of that was a confusion to him. Because until man came, reproduction had never happened. Only creation. They never knew that it was possible for a man to meet a woman. All of a sudden, Satan saw me, um, I said Mary, um, Eve <laughs> getting pregnant. And then she gives birth to Cain. And Satan says, this is amazing. Thinking Cain was the seed of the woman that was prophesied, he entered into Cain. Are you seeing that? Then he saw that man can still get a woman pregnant again and gave birth to Abel. And he made Cain kill Abel. Are you following me now? Genesis chapter 5. I want to show you the origin of the system of Babylon. That's why we are saying all of this. In the highest, let our King be lifted. Oh, oh, Jesus, you be lifted high. Jesus, you be lifted higher, higher, be lifted higher. Sorry, 4, 4 verse 16. Watch this. Cain, that rebel, Cain did not even know what happened to him. The devil found expression in him. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because he needed to continue that agenda. And watch this. This is the origin. From verse 16. It's projected. Read. One to read. And Cain did what? Stop. What does it mean to go out of the presence of the Lord? It doesn't mean to run away from him. It means to depart willfully from his governing authority. Cain said, God, as far as me and you are concerned, I, I refuse your headship over my life. And Satan said, this is exactly what I want. Are you getting the point now? Cain 
departed from the presence of God and he went and dwelled in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. 17. And Cain knew his wife and she conceived and bare Enoch. He had a son. And he did what? Built a city. Watch this. Because the pride of any king, kings named cities after their sons and so on and so forth, representing their future. This was the manifestation of the spirit of the Antichrist. He built a city and he called the name of that city Enoch after his son. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now from this city, Christ or God as we know was not the head of this city. It was a city of rebellion. Are you getting what I'm saying? All kinds of human atrocities began to happen. Anger, envy, killing, rivalry. It was, an, it was the government of Satan. The first manifestation of the government of Satan that our dispensation records started from Cain. Are you getting this now? And the Bible says the moment that happened, we see the first manifestation of the spirit of Elijah in the Bible. It came in the person of Noah. Are you getting what I'm saying? The spirit of Elijah is not a person. It's not a prophetic spirit. It's the spirit that restores men to the ordinances of God. Because he said, every time a revival is about to happen in the earth, there is a spiritual pattern. Elijah must show up. Is that true? When, when, when there was darkness all around, Elijah the Tishbite showed up, right? Micah, Malachi chapter 4 tells us before the day of the Lord, Elijah will come again. Is that true? Before Jesus showed up, who came? Elijah. In John came in the spirit and the power of Elijah. Now, this Babylon, the spirit of Babylon is a governmental system. It's a system that is hungry for power and sovereignty and allegiance. Please understand this. That is the reason why Babylon oftentimes would operate with kings. Notice that Jezebel married Ahab the king. The same spirit of Jezebel re-emerges in Herodias, making sure the original wife of the king dies. And then Jezebel in Herodias marries the king. Is that true? Herod in your Bible. And then demands for the head of John the Baptist. What do you do with the head of a man? In continuation to the vow Jezebel made to Elijah that I will remove your head. After many years, human beings change, but the agenda is still the same. Are you getting what I'm saying? Hmm. So, Noah was the first manifestation of of a true son of God and, and, and I've told you again and again that the concept of the sons of God did not start in the New Testament, right? We see in the book of Job 38, sons of God. Man was not even made. That was during the creation of heavens, the sons of God were rejoicing. It's an office in heaven. sense the power of God very strongly. Are you following me now? Let's see how far we can go. Noah came. What was the instruction? He said, Noah, the earth has become wicked. I need to judge it. He said, build an ark. Theologically speaking, the ark was the, the size of three stadia. Three large stadiums. Right? Three story buildings made of gopher wood. Noah spent 120 years of earth's time building that. He committed his entire life to build the ark. And when that happened, Noah, his wife, the three sons and their wives entered in. And what happened? There was judgment. Is that true? The whole race was white. And out of eight people, the spirit of the Antichrist still testing for the continuation of the agenda. What happened? The Bible says Noah drank wine. And he was drunk. And then one of his sons saw his nakedness. I've said it again. That is a coded language. That is more than just seeing a man's nakedness. Don't parents take their, don't children take their parents to the hospital? Don't they bath them? What is it about seeing a man's nakedness that would demand such a cause? It was more than that. It was not just looking at a man's nakedness. There were mysteries that were given Noah. 
it was that mystery the spirit of the antichrist entered one of the sons and made sure he peeped into those mysteries because satan does not know the future i hope you realize that it's because he did not know the future that's why they killed many people during moses time if he knew he would look for moses exactly and kill satan is not so accurate you see the goal of this is to demystify this guy that has threatened the nations. Because speaking, he said, O king of Tyre, he said, thou which subdued the nations. The strength of evil is deception. 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 Nations can be deceived. And if we are to be ambassadors, we must understand which gives us that which gives us strength in this day and this age. If you're following me, say amen. After the judgment of Noah out of the eight people, Satan found expression in one and wickedness grew. Watch this. Genesis 11 verse 1. We see the continuation of that agenda of the Antichrist system. In the first man who originated what we have come to know today to be witchcraft and occultism. He said, and the whole earth was of one language and one speech. Verse 2. And it came to pass, this and that, the land of China. Verse 3. And talking about Nimrod now. Nimrod Kush. That man, Nimrod. Have you read about him? Nimrod, the son of Kush. Now, theologically speaking, Nimrod killed his father, Kush, and married his mother, Semiramai. And today, she's the one that is worshipped in many sects as the queen of heaven. Hallelujah. The spirit of the Antichrist entered into Nimrod, a governmental system. See it again. And he said, come, go to let us what? Build a city. Notice that every time that spirit manifests, it seeks to build a city. A godless governmental system that can authorize the activity of darkness in a way to mock God. And brothers and sisters, let me tell you, everything that has happened from Genesis 11 until Jesus came was different ways and strategies for the devil to make sure that this agenda of darkness. So the Antichrist system is not just a system of witchcraft. It's not just a system of perversion. It's a system that seeks to transfer the allegiance of humanity to any other entity outside of God. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying now? This is a very powerful teaching. If you do not understand this, you, you will be in for a root shock and you will not have the intelligence to confront the things around your life and to walk in victory. Watch this. When Jesus came, when Jesus came, what happened? Matthew chapter 4, from verse 4. Satan, when he finished fasting, I hope you realize that all Satan had been doing. Do you know the reason why every nation fought Israel? Because of that prophecy, the seed will bruise the head of the serpent. The moment God entered a covenant with Israel, they became the enemies of everybody. Because he had given them a clue that the seed must come out from that. Are you getting the whole thing? It wasn't just because Israelites were wicked people. No. The moment they became a covenant people, when john the baptist came into the scene what happened the spirit of the antichrist started moving the scribes to ask are you the christ he wanted to know are you the christ and john kept confusing them he said i'm the voice of one he said, who are you are you the christ don't confuse us he said, i'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness repent the moment john said this is my he said behold the lamb when he mentioned that from that time watch this Jesus became the enemy of the scribes, the Pharisees, and everybody. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Now, um, Matthew chapter 4. When he took him, he said, man shall not live by bread. That's, he told him, turn this stone into bread, right? Temptation number 2. He took him to a pinnacle in the temple and he said, jump. Jump. Many of us would have jumped and died. Because we always like proving we are anointed. <laughs> He would have jumped and died. That would have been it. Case closed. No redemption. Verse. Next. Now watch this. Watch this. Verse 6 please. 
Let's go to verse 6. Or 7, 7. I'm looking for the third temptation. Uh, okay, 8. Let's look at 8. Okay. He says again, watch this. He says the devil takes who? Jesus, your Jesus. Satan told him, follow me. And Jesus went. It's in your Bible. Why? Because he had the keys of dominion. The very key of Adam was in his hands. And God had to respect it. He said, he took him to a high mountain. Where is this mountain in the earth today? That when you stand upon, you will see the glories of the world. It was a spiritual thing here. It was not just a, which of the mountains do you stand? He says, Satan took him into, not upon, into. He entered somewhere. It's in your Bible. He took him into a high mountain and showed him the kingdoms of this world and the glory of them. He said, it is mine. I know that you want this. Satan revealed there to us the strategy of the advancement of the Antichrist system. Watch this. This is how Satan markets it. In that mountain, there is wealth. In that mountain, there is job without struggle. In that mountain, there is free marriage without toasting. Look up, please. Are you getting what I'm saying? And he said, he took him up to that mountain and he showed him the glory. So watch this. Satan never tells you what you are to do. He first shows you what you will get so that it becomes difficult to say no. This is what he did to Jesus. He took him there and showed him everything. And then verse 9. And said unto him, All these things I will give thee. Meaning it was within his power to give anybody. Is it true? <laughs> it says, If thou will what? If thou will what? Are you seeing that? That was all. So it's not about money. It's not about cancer. It's not about HIV. It's about allegiance. It's not about witchcraft in your family. It's not about refusing the church from growing. It's not about stopping you from passing jam. It's bigger than that. Satan does not need all those things. It's not about demons oppressing you. There is a bigger story. If you don't understand, you will sit down in spiritual myopia, fighting all kinds of things. Here's the key. If thou will fall down and worship me. The Bible says the same spirit operated in Nebuchadnezzar and he built 90 feet of solid gold. Is that true? And he said, the moment you hear music, everybody do what? Bow. Now, the goal is this. Satan does not want you to bow down directly to him because he, is, he was the God of this system. Watch this. He said, bow down to anything that is not God. It's still the same thing you are doing. Bow down to money. Bow down to women. Bow down to your uncle. It's still the same thing. Are you understanding the, the structure of the Antichrist system? So, the Antichrist system is not just the system of occultism and witchcraft. It's the system that brings your life under compulsion to an allegiance to any other thing outside of the Christ. And there is a way that happens. Are you getting blessed, please? Jesus was eventually going to take back the kingdom. Take back the keys. But Satan said, why follow the long route? We can negotiate and I can make this thing easy for you. Why go through all of this, this thing? Just bow down and have it. Right? Why spend years, and, 10 years and, and almost die building a bungalow? Bow down to me and own estates. That's why the Bible says, what shall it profit a man? Have you read it in your Bible? If he does what? That means you can do business with your soul. The question is, who is buying it? You are the one selling it. Who is buying it? What shall it profit you if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? That means you sell your soul. The question is to who? Who is this person that can buy and do business with souls? Revelations 18. Let me show you. We hail you most high. 
I hail you most high. Revelations 18. Let me read very quickly. Watch this. It's going to be a long reading, verse 1. Revelations 18, verse 1. Are you there? And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was made bright with his glory. And he cried with a mighty voice, saying, What? Babylon is Babylon the great is falling. It says, and it's become the habitation of demons and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage for every unclean beast. Watch this mystery, verse 3. Let's see if media can help us. If you are fast enough to help us, then fine. Otherwise, I'll just go back to my Bible. For all nations have done what? Have drunk the wine of the wrath of her fornication. That's why you see women representing that system. Jezebel, Babylon. When they meet prospective kings, when they meet talented people like a harlot comes to a man, they come seeking a fraternity. Bow down to me. Fraternize with me and I will open the gates of the kingdom. I will open the gates of wealth. I will open the gates of grace. Are you getting what I'm saying? It says, and the kings of the earth have done what? committed fornication with her and the merchandise of the earth are what's rich through the abundance of her delicacies she made them rich she made the man a governor she made the man a president voting or no voting huh? she made them celebrity stars on TV took them from rags to riches Babylon the great are you getting what I'm saying? Hmm. When you understand this, you find out that nothing happens in the system until your allegiance to a deity is confirmed. That story of right, nobody rises up from nowhere. It's a lie. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is a spiritual dimension to everything in life. When you see somebody just get up, travels out of the country and comes back and becomes a millionaire, the Bible says, ah, okay, we're in verse 4. The Bible says in verse 3 that the kings committed fornication with her. Hmm. Let's run to verse 9. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived luxuriously shall bewail her and lament for her when they see the smoke of her burning. So there is a prophecy. The Antichrist system will crumble. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Already there is a prophecy ahead. That anyone that fraternizes with this system will join them. Babylon is falling. That was a prophecy. The system of the Antichrist will be crumbled. And there is an entity that will make that happen. The name of that entity is called the church. This is why I'm teaching you what we're teaching. The church is not an institution. The church is the name of the spiritual entity that will crumble this system. Verse 10. Standing afar off for the fear of torment saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon that mighty city for in what one hour is your judgment come one hour all you will see is the smoke the smoke of that city now watch this i told you that through civilization this strategy of the devil has been masquerading itself in ancient times the kings had fraternity with all of these demons of darkness and all of that. Watch this. When Jesus came, Jesus came to bring us back into the allegiance to God. Are you getting what I'm saying? But then from that time till now, there is a contention. And the contention is twofold. Number one, an opportunity given to every man to individually declare his allegiance. And then number two, to bring territories under the corporate allegiance of God. Are you seeing that now? So the first dimension is personal. That's what you call new birth. That's what you call salvation. 
a declaration that I choose. I have an option to choose between Babylon and this. I will show you how that many Christians suffer casualty because they claim they are born again, but they are still operating in the system of Babylon. Are you getting what I'm saying? And so Satan makes sure that the boss in the office, right, fraternizes with Babylon. He, he will not go to the devil directly. He will go to a harbor list. And they will say, just make sure this and that happens. And you are the boss. And now you come to work. A Christian. You now come to work and you are under intense pressure. Because the presence of that man wants to push you to compromise on your integrity and your allegiance. Are you seeing how Babylon works? So you graduate with first class and you hold your degree and you are happy. The moment you enter the labor market, they stop you. They say, not so. Who sent you? Whose allegiance are you? You say, anyone, I need a job. That's the point. That's the point. The devil leverages on your desperation to succeed. Are you getting me? And shuts the mouth of preachers from teaching that the kingdom of God too has a structure for your success. So in your desperation, Satan comes. He came after Jesus finished praying for 40 days. When a man finished praying, don't you need food? Praying and fasting. So he waits until that desperation is there. 29, 30, 31, 32. Your mother tells you, don't return to my house again if you will not bring a husband. And the devil now comes. Babylon, there is an easier way. Bow down to me and a rich man will show up now. And you will think he's play. The moment you bow down, here comes a rich man. Right? And then you come and you begin that fraternity. Satan uses your allegiance to him to mock God. You see that? Let me tell you something. The greatest insult you can give the devil is to stick to God regardless of what happens. I love you whether things go right or wrong and I'm ready to use your system no matter how slow it is. You see why it is important that preachers teach their congregation the kingdom way of doing everything. The kingdom way of doing everything. So you don't teach people come to church, pray in tongues, but go to your, your workplace and they just say, ah, they are sharing something. There's one five, five hundred thousand that does not have a reason why they are sharing it. And he said, this is my pocket. Just put my own fast. This is Babylon. Whether you, if, if nobody told you, I am telling you that is Babylon. So it uses different things. Mammon. It uses lust. It uses different skills. But it's still the same thing. Watch this. In our time, in our time right now, the name given to that devilish system, there is a name. The name is subtly, there's no time I would have, I planned playing a documentary, but we we'll, would we'll sleep here all night. If God grants us grace, maybe next week. There is the name given to the evolution of Babylon. It's called the New World Order, right? In the time of the kings, right from the last one or two centuries ago, it was called the Illuminati. That fraternity of darkness. Right? I know many of you have heard about it and just laughed. Look up. Let me shock you. Let me tell you a few things that will surprise you. They have controlled the media. Walt Disney belongs to them. CNN belongs to them. They control the information you hear. They control the movie you watch. It's a system. Are you getting what I'm saying now? They control the stock exchange market, Wall Street. They control everything, the governmental systems. They define our scope of civilization. And yet believers are there praying in tongues in church. And we do not understand that we are the ecclesia. The name given to the system that would take the authority of Jesus and prove that darkness cannot prevail where there is light. Please, are you getting what I'm saying? very important don't say it does not concern you 
don't say it does not concern you when you are in class and somebody looks at you and is frustrated by your passion from God and all of a sudden you see three carryovers you know you did well FFF welcome Babylon is at work are you getting what I'm telling you when a lecturer looks at you and says if you want to graduate you know what to do go and wait for me at the back of my office what is that the antichrist system masquerading itself now it's not even masquerading itself it's coming out openly a man looks at you and says, look at your employment letter I tear it in your presence you go back and say Lord I love you anyhow God doesn't want that kind of prayer it's good to love him anyhow but the church must rise he says we are the city set on a hill we will keep begging when we remain poor and broke we keep consoling ourselves that don't worry, the day Jesus will come, he will wipe our tears. He can wipe your tears now. Are you getting what I'm, sh I'm sharing with you? The system. Right now, little children, watch cartoons and see. Right? All kinds of, 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 of things that should not be shown. Children are so addicted, not just because they want to watch. There is a com they have mastered the mind. Don't forget they are receiving assistance from the realm of the spirit. So little children love seeing blood. They love violence. You see a little doll baby, right? If they want me to buy this cup now, they will give this cup hips. Right? This cup will have hips. It will say, use me. And you see the man rush, I want this one. Ten. Bring ten of this cup. Why? Because... It is a system. It has been fabricated. It was so subtle. We didn't know when it has evolved. Are you getting what I'm saying right now? Seduction. The seduction. That's why it gives it the language of a fornicator. The same way a fornicator lures you into an unholy union. That's what Babylon is doing right now. They determine everything. Everything. They create the trends. They do everything that happens. They control our speakings. Our language. Right? They tell you what to say. They tell you what slang to say. They tell you what film to watch. They define what is civilization for you. If you do not assume a particular mode, you are not civilized. And it mounts pressure on you and forces you to bend. One time, I, I, I think, um, I don't know where they took me to and it was time to eat. And they brought all kinds of things. I told them, I said, the work that I do, if I use these utensils to eat, I won't be satisfied. Get me a spoon. I don't have time for, for nonsense. You bring all kinds of things. I, the Bible says, he who does not work should not eat. That means he who works. You watch people in the restaurant sweating pouring rice on themselves because they must use fork right cutting themselves up with knife i must do it i'm not saying you shouldn't be civilized that's not what i'm saying but i'm, I'm saying you see a system has brought you under pressure right i saw one guy bab is here and bab dollars and i said this guy is broke he's poor now I'm not I'm not I'm not a religious person trust me but I'm saying it is the pressure he probably watched the actor of a film or a musician with dollars or something on his head and I must become like that the pressure of Babylon are you getting what I'm saying there were times when our secondary school had decent teachers you dress you talking you look nice now you go and see the people teaching the guy enters as if he came to pick papers how are you students you see that and, 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 the, and the students watch that. This is the model. This is the mentor that they have to become. If we do not become apostolic and prophetic in our approach, there will be casualty in the decades that are coming. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is this kind of agenda that should govern things like politics. People ask me questions. I say, I, I don't like PDP. I don't like APC. I don't like anyone. All I know is whatever promotes God's agenda, I'm there. It's as simple as that. And we'll force the agenda of God to happen in this nation. For sure. For sure. The church is alive. 
don't you think the church is dead as ebola the church is very alive very very alive we sent it back to hell where it came from hallelujah there may be imperfections but the church is marching let me tell you jesus is found where the church is no matter what happens the church in nigeria is alive we are the firstborn of god who will present to the nations true apostolic and prophetic christianity before christ returns yeah that rejected stone that why do you think Boko Haram and the rest it's not just about politics they are being led by an influence they do not know but the church will stamp them out next week i'll be showing you what we can do because they've made the church look powerless that if you don't have it's not just about finance there is an anointing jesus christ took his power and gave that system are you getting what i'm saying he didn't just call one person and say you i give you if you like this guy I give him no he took his power the power that will crumble babylon and said my ecclesia take it i've given it to you but we do not know the scope of our use of that power is healing of cancers and this right we do not know that we have the authority to take charge of territories and compel it to come to the alignment of the christ let me tell you something days will come when things will happen in this nation you will be surprised you will wait and see tongue-talking christian bankers we will sack anybody who does not love god without apology look 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 watch this the members will be in our churches so we are the ones who will teach them and this big mouth it won't keep quiet my goodness my goodness that time is coming it's coming that's what you are becoming the bible says now are we the sons of god and it does not yet appear they don't know it god has shrouded us in a mystery when he's done with us we will prove to creation that jesus did not tell a lie a witness is one who claims that the claim of another is true if i if you steal our money and i saw you right and we're in court they will say stand hold your bible swear that nothing but the truth the moment you think they say did you see it i say i saw it they say prove it i say this is the picture so the church is here to demonstrate that although we were not there at the cross there is a spirit that was there and he's in us and in partnership with that spirit we will prove that he's the king of kings and the lord of lords no longer allowing babylon to kill our children huh I wanted to cane one small boy one day i just saw him he just looked at one small girl who was running to go and kiss i wanted to call him use two fingers and just whip him and say who taught you <laughs> probably watch somebody do it house help relatives in the parlor all kinds of of of, of tv right look church i want you to wake up that's why we call this series the emergence there is an emergence the bible says obadiah 1 verse 21 it says saviors that's what he called them saviors shall arise brothers and sisters hear me romans 8 verse 18 for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared there are people there are people sitting right here that death will not carry them it's not the issue of I shall not die. You can't die. The assignment compels God's integrity upon your life. Are you getting what I'm saying? No, no, no. Please believe what I'm telling you. There is a reason why you should not die. If you think it's just to keep being a liability to creation, you are in trouble. There is a way you become so relevant to the agenda of the king. And God gave us a sign. He said when you begin to see darkness upon the earth start rejoicing it's time to arise are you not seeing what is happening in the earth the meltdown they've not seen anything a heavy melt because the selfishness of man will never allow him carry out satan's agenda somebody will betray somebody they don't have love they cannot love because love is shared abroad by the holy ghost love is not affection love is shared abroad that character that can make you almost die to protect another they don't have it 
That's what happened to Boko Haram. They started killing everybody all and sundry. When those who sponsored them started denying, they said, oh, you are denying us. Let's everybody, you are our enemy. Hallelujah. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. Nations will crumble. It has only started. You, the pride of kings will be humbled. Their equation is being interrupted by a hand they cannot see. Like Belshazzar, the handwriting on the wall, when it writes upon your government is over. You have been weighed in a balance and you have been found wanting. Many kings have, they've, they've, they've spoken like the beast. Their blasphemy has risen to heaven. Like the man who made the Titanic and vowed that even God cannot sing the Titanic and stood in awe when the Titanic sank. Only a fool will say in his heart, there is no God. There are people who have vowed and say, if you're, before your family will rise, me, I am the custodian of the oracles of this village. Watch God bring them down. We are here to stamp out nonsense. Listen, Jesus said, all hail. He said, all authority. The word is exousia. The capacity to stand in my office. All authority to unlock the heavens and the earth has been given to me. I give it to you. Please believe it. I give it to you. This is the mindset I carry when I pray for the sick. I know that they are, I take their sickness personal. Because this is about the kingdom of our father and what the devil is doing. It's not about what their village is doing. Kill yourself there in your village. No. Hallelujah. So Satan has structured it well. He has marketed the gospel of prosperity subtly to the church. So that we remain poor and broke because the borrower is always slave to the lender. Right? He has marketed all kinds of things. So the attack is coming everywhere. Spiritually. Notice brothers and sisters. That our, our forefathers and grandfathers gave birth to 13 children. No CS. Huh? What they used to cut the placenta of the baby we don't even know. Whether it's hot coal. Whether, whatever. They just caught that 13 times and nothing happened. But here a woman comes because of her allegiance to God. Something happens. They now start saying there's a fiber. That devil is a liar. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Yeah, break every chain, break every chain. Sing it one more time. There's an army rising up. You're rising up. There's an army rising up. Rising up. There's an army rising up. Rising up. To break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. To break every chain. Break every chain. So the goal of the Antichrist system is total allegiance to Satan as the source and the sustainer of all things. Full stop. That's the one goal of the Antichrist system. To compel humanity to total allegiance to Satan as the source and the sustainer. By depending on your boss for your daily bread, you are partnering with that. There is an economic system of the kingdom that is bigger than your boss. But if you do not know and you have been taught that it's salary that will fund your assignment, you become a slave to that boss. Then he sleeps with you when he wants to sleep with you. Then he sacks you when he wants to sack you. But there is an army of apostolic billionaires, not just careless money mongers. The secrets of the kingdom shown. We are paying the price now and the world is laughing like the ark of Noah. 
the spirit of Elijah is bringing us to that reality. You've not seen prosperity yet, brothers and sisters. Wait until the army rises. Men whose wealth will be as equal as that of continents. They will walk like gods upon the earth. Why should you beg for, give me $35 to air a program? How much is it when a prostitute sleeps with a billionaire and becomes a millionaire the next day? All these things are the speakings of the beast unto God. They rise as a, a filthy incense to the heavens. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So that's what is happening. Look at the graduates in Nigeria. One, one out of every ten graduates get a decent job in the first two years of graduation. That's the plan. Babylon at work. Babylon at work. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yet, when you teach the church economic empowerment, they mock you. They say you are being carnal. Right? We do not know that the civilization of today moves upon the strength of economic empowerment. The person who has the resources dictate the rules. We are sick and tired of them doing every kind of thing. We will make our own programs. We don't have dull people. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are many of you in your sleep. You see these things in dreams. You know that there is something about your life. It's beyond ABU. It's beyond Zaria. Some of you, God took you wherever and brought you here. God gave you admission with one taxi. It's not about jam. It's about an agenda. Hallelujah. I see this thing every day. As the nations crumble, I see it as a signal. God is saying, son, stand up. Stand up. Church, rise up. I call my bride, the firstborn of God, to arise. But the reason is because we have refused to pay attention to the things that empower us. Hallelujah. The, the chairman board of trustee of this ministry was, he was decorated a general last year. I said, that's right. Anybody that disturbs us will tell him. He's part of kingdom advancement. Gathered men of influence and shut the gates of darkness. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The kingdom will promote the ideology of God through one word. It's called influence. 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 That's why we'll keep contending for greater anointing and greater grace. The devil has spoke blasphemy too much. Are you getting what I'm saying? The church has been mocked. They act Nigerian films and they act man of God sha -da 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 -da, on a demon and then the, he, he releases power in the name of Jesus and the demon holds the anointing and throws it on the ground. Come on now. Which one is that one? There are all kinds of anointings. Which one? Which one did he hold and throw on the ground? There is the one you get as talisman. There is authentic apostolic power that Jesus, which one did the Havalis take and throw on the ground? See, we don't understand. These things bring money. But it is the, the generation of man bowing to Satan and receiving money. Let me tell you, if you are poor, let me just announce to you that your poverty is partnering with Babylon. Listen to me. It's a serious issue. It's not the issue of car. No! You don't, you don't need to be a Christian to have car. Men who will shut the gates of darkness sack lecturers that trouble our ladies employ the ones that call upon the name of the Lord next week I will show you the strategy I'm not just making noise I was trained in the wilderness of the spirit I'm not a, I'm not a stupid person just making noise there is a strategy Lord you were higher than any other We will declare to the nations. Our God. Sing one more time. Say. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer. Awesome in power. Hallelujah. We just.
just returned from a conference in Kaduna. And while I was ministering yesterday, they just brought one mama. You can see the way the devil had oppressed this woman. They were dragging her to bring her out. The son was almost crying. And I said, hold on, we've not started ministering. They were desperate. Why? Most probably because they've gone to a lot of churches with men of God making noise. Jesus can do this. He is this. I know he can do this. Put your faith to work. The manifestation of the glory of God is a visible revelation of the power of God here and now. Here and now. The woman stood there. I was talking and I was just watching. I said, Mama, what is wrong? And they said, for five months, they've taken this woman to the hospital. They said, arthritis, she cannot walk. I, I said, that devil is a liar. All of a sudden, the Lord opened my eyes and I saw this innocent woman tied. I, from my head to her toe, I saw snakes. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest. For this purpose for this purpose for that joblessness the every time you see a challenge say for this purpose for this purpose they said you will not graduate for this purpose they said no job will come for this purpose for this purpose for this purpose everybody in your family is an idol worshiper but for this purpose you came god has taken you as an envoy to crumble babylon to crumble babylon It will happen forget about the pain of today hear me forget about the disappointment i see men and women who will get married age two your child is praying in tongues age two a little boy while you pray in tongues he's praying no 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 listen we won't be fighting and beating our wives it's over we, by now we know it's a spirit and we have authority against it men are not that bad women are not that evil Babylon masquerading itself gone are those days I tell you all things are past God is doing something new in our time God is working something powerful in this day God is building a mighty army in our days and he won't stop he won't stop till we look just like him he won't stop hey, he won't stop till the church looks like him he won't stop he won't stop till we look just like him God is raising mighty men in these days. God is building a mighty army in these days. He won't stop, he won't stop till the church looks like him. He won't stop, hey, he won't stop till the church looks like him. Listen. Next week I will show you the strategy on how this will happen. Don't you ever think you are little to make this thing happen. Once God can find a man and find a people, he will do mighty things. He told Jeremiah, don't say I am young. Don't say I am a child. I will put my, my words in your mouth. You will subdue, you will tear down and you will rebuild. Hallelujah. Tonight I came to challenge you. Babylon is falling. What you are seeing in the TV is falling. The old wine has finished. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The church is rising. Watch this. Nigeria, I told you, I've shared with you already the prophetic agenda of God. But Nigeria as a continent, this platform is not the platform I will share some things with you that God has revealed to me. There are some things that if they don't happen this year, the hand of Satan has been broken in Nigeria forever till Christ comes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is a reason why you see darkness looming. It is beyond humans. It's an agenda. It's the attacking of the firstborn of God. But God is always one step ahead. When you see the church pray and we speak, 
don't let the devil fool you that nothing is happening there is much that is being done in the kingdom are you hearing what i'm saying when the dust settles you will see a victorious church he said i will build i will supervise that this church stands i will build my church but the goal is to have as many people come into this alignment look at me one man cannot do this alone one church one ministry cannot do this it takes a people who will say lord we understand lord we have pledged our allegiance first and foremost there are many of us here your stand with god is not straight we don't even know where you stand as occasion serves when in rome behave like any other place that is not zion is of the devil it's as simple as that for you to be part of this army your allegiance must not be confused where do you stand where do you stand the gates will ask you my brother is not all about business they will trap you in that oil company where do you stand you must answer the question where do you stand where do you stand when you declare where you stand and then you have committed whatever government you pledge allegiance to as for me i've made a decision thank god i'm going to be a father from the womb you know how john the baptist was filled with the holy spirit <laughs> many men are not responsible if you're a father here god is speaking to you take charge there are many homes you pray when there's trouble if they don't pay the man three months salary, say okay children let's come together and pray say let's pray because what god the attack coming to this family when you don't take your place right watch this forget about the flamboyancy you see on tv babylon is falling it's a prophecy babylon is falling and your assignment right now at this level is to be an envoy of the kingdom go to your territory do you know how satan is ravaging our homes there are people in our homes with terminal diseases you are watching them take that authority and that anointing if nobody has told you you are anointed i'm telling you this night you are anointed do you know how things went bad in my family i heard about i heard about the things that surrounded my bed and i said satan you will pay for it ah you will pay for it are you still afraid of the devil or should he begin to be afraid of you i told you it's an old story satan is not the opposite of god there was a day he was not existing satan has an exact creation date are you hearing what I'm saying? The strength of evil is deception. When you know where you stand and you understand what it takes to enforce that victory, he will stay clear of your life. Some of you get up in the morning, all kinds of pain, just say, Kai, it's pain. Ah, is this not how my mother felt the other day? Is that what you should... Look, I told you, take this word whatever goes wrong in your life say for this purpose for this purpose was the son of god made manifest that he may what destroy 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 the church is the representation of the victory of christ the church is the representation of the fulfillment of prophecy the church is the hallmark the symbol of the wisdom of God and we cannot fail there is a generation that must not fail we are going to pray look you must you must tell God I am available I am available some of you God is calling you from your slumber your spiritual slumber ladies God is calling you forget about that allergy and concentrate on God allergy gives you one million you insulted God God wants to make you a nation. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
quit all of these carnal things and stay with God and watch him bless you. Don't ever let any man fool you. You know, gone are the days where when you say you are going into ministry, people just look at you and say, Hey! You mean it? As if this kind, or you say, I'm going to marry a man of God. They say, Talk. His grace is of it. Why are you going to talk like that? You marry a busy businessman and you are happy. I'm X, Y, Z. You know, they have, it's part of this antichrist system because the, the, the revelation they are trying to say is you are marrying a poor, broke man, right? Your job is just to be suffering. They, they imagine four legs of, of firewood trying to cook food for church members. Must you think like that? Who taught you that? The kingdom of God is a prosperous kingdom. Let no man fool you. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's our year of the rain. The kingdom of God is a prosperous kingdom. He wants to give you the anointing and the influence it will take to legislate. But he first wants you to understand this system. Anytime you bow to anything or any principle that is not of God, realize that you are communicating your fraternity with Babylon. That becomes the basis. Your love for God and your passion to see his kingdom come becomes the constraint upon your life to run away from evil. Not the fear of Satan. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm not going to come and try to sleep with a lady now. Why? Not just because I'm afraid of Satan, but because I realize the significance of standing in my position to declare my love for God and my passion my contribution to see his kingdom come and that love constrains me are you getting what i'm saying that's why i preach i came back i came back to this town 12 12 midnight on the dot it was as if i was not seeing where my bed was but i said no problem i must prepare there are lives that we must sharpen because there is an agenda of god and then one one demon somewhere will go to call your name I pity the devil that calls my name in any coven. Number one is that the fire that will come out from whatever they are invoking, that's not all. Two, the harpalist will die as a lesson that not everybody is touchable. My goodness, no matter how a madman is, he will not enter fire by mistake. There are, there are, there are, there are madmen and there are madmen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Invoke nonsense. There are many times I'm about to travel. Somebody sent a text. He says, so accident. I say, me. Hey. It's not, I'm not just bragging. I'm standing on a rock. Let this mind be in you. You have watched films where a boss will say, I will come and kill you and he will kill everybody helplessly. You have carried that mindset to walk with God. The believer is supernatural in every way. I want you to understand this. Brothers and sisters, I've prayed for people with contagious diseases. If I'm lying by now, you would have known. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's easy to stand and speak. But what happens when you hug and talk to somebody with tuberculosis? Or somebody with a, a communicable disease? I've been doing this for years. My body is as healthy as a baby's body. Healthy as a baby's body. There is the reality of another life that when it's at work in you, it will turn you into a superhuman. Hallelujah. Rise up, we are going to pray. I want us to insist on some things in the spirit. Please take this prayer session seriously. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time it's not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. I'd like you to lift your voice and cry. And say, Lord, I declare, I pledge my eternal allegiance to you from today. There's no going back. There's no bending. Lift your voice and pray. You are the Lord of my life. There's no confusion about it. What shall separate us from the love of God? 
in the secret and in the open i love you i belong to your government there's no confusion about it i belong to your government there's no confusion about it pray i compel my life to come under the influence of your government i compel my life to come under the influence of your government my thought comes under the influence of your government my words under the influence of your government pray Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hear me. Look up. Let me speak to you. Whether you are coming from Plateau State or Kogi State or wherever, you are going to be the declare i've been called out of every tribe hear me every tongue listen don't let yourself to be a victim of where you have come you didn't choose it don't let anybody speak nonsense and say you came from kogi state you came from this as though there is a cause upon your life and there is no way out prophesy with violence in your spirit i've been called out of every tribe every tongue I challenge every power that is not of God. Oh, I'm anointed. I carry the fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy Ghost as an envoy of power, as an envoy of the kingdom as an ambassador as a representative called out of every cause called out of every covenant called out of every ordinance pray he make his angels winds and his ministers flames of fire I have no business with the ordinances of the fathers, with the ordinances of witchcraft. I willingly, I choose this day that I serve the king. I choose this day that my allegiance is to Christ of him. Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. You are creating a reaction in the realm of the spirit. Silent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Look at me. There are many of you, humanly speaking, you are seeing patterns in your family. And around your life you know should not be it's true that you have been saying you are in Christ but the truth is that as it is right now there are things you are seeing in your life that are speaking blasphemy to the Lord you are going to pray you know what it is you are challenging Babylon first in your life and in your family call it by his name and cause it by the God of heaven lift your voice and pray break those patterns come on Break those patterns. That pattern of childlessness. I break it. I cause it by the God of heaven. That pattern of failure. That pattern of lust. That pattern of addiction. That pattern of masturbation. That pattern of immorality. I curse you by the God of heaven. I curse you by the name that is above every other.
pray way out pray your way out pray your way out way out I break the patterns I of Jesus I challenge the forces of darkness Pray I travel by the spirit in the name of Jesus the sun shines for my family the sun shines for me I cannot go down no way there is a spirit of God upon me. A prateke rekete, a protoskete, shekete teke, rekete teke. Call it by name. Call it by name. Call it by name. If thou shalt say to this mountain, if thou shalt say to this mountain, if thou shalt say, if thou shalt say, if thou shalt say, a protoskope teke. Command victory. Establish victory. Don't be paid. Establish victory in the name of Jesus. Break down the walls of witchcraft. Break down the walls of evil. Break down the walls of limitation. You are an ambassador. You carry a big. God he's an awesome God he reigns from heaven above with we stamp power and mind sing it from your is a song of victory our God he's an awesome God he reigns from heaven above I tell you you will come out a champion no power will keep you yourselves into two you're going to release prophecies upon that person listen 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 the bible says where the word of a king is there is power where the word of a king is there is power hallelujah i like you to pray as if you are praying for your own brother as if you're praying for your sister prophesy Open the fountains of blessings. Open the fountains of grace. Come on now. Koinonia, pray. I call you blessed. I strengthen you. It's your season of the rain. The glory of the Lord is upon you. The favor of the Lord is upon you. Prophesy from the depth of your heart. Call it forth. Even God who quickened the dead and calls for the things that be not as though they were prophesy. I call for that in life. I of light passion. I call it forth. I call it forth upon the dimensions of wealth and abundance, supernatural jobs, open doors, new levels of revelation, new levels of Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we pray, we shift things in the heavens. When we pray, we, we grant the angels access to enforce the counsel of the, of the Lord. Listen. 
we are going to pray the election is by the corner we are going to pray the bible says pray for the peace of jerusalem zaria is our jerusalem we are going to speak to the borders of this city we stay the hands of evil the hands of bloodshed you will not cross the circumference of this city we hold the keys of this city and we drive out every devil come on pray is your jerusalem there will be peace upon our walls peace upon our borders shalom zaria shalom zaria we pray upon the borders of this city the north to the south we command peace shalom shalom nothing missing nothing broken we drive out every power we drive out every force we take charge of the heavenlies we take charge no death no bomb blast no bloodshed in the name of jesus the church is praying the church is praying the government of god the institution that carries his authority is praying We speak hallelujah now we are going to pray i feel sorry for those who say nigeria will divide they don't know the mystery of our creation go and read isaiah 18 when you see the representation of nigeria in isaiah 18 you know that no human entity has what it takes to break this nation are you ready to pray you're going to pray to every border first secure your family I'm not hearing bad news. It's, it's not, no, 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 no. Refuse it and pray. Spread the peace of the spirit across the length and breadth of this nation. Go ahead and pray. We legislate as ambassadors of the kingdom. We command it in the name of Jesus. In Abuja, in Kaduna, in Jos, in Makodi, in Kogi State. Potakot, we command let there be peace let there be peace let there be peace in our nation even in the forthcoming election let there be peace let there be peace by the mercy of God by the mercy of God remember your firstborn oh God Remember she that you died for. Remember your firstborn, oh God. For God and for God. We pray and we invoke the mercy of God upon our families. Frustrate the token of liars. Turn their wisdom backward. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 I want you to know that you're establishing things in the spirit. This is how kings reign. The Bible says, let it be done in the earth. In other words, compel compliance. Hallelujah. Compel compliance. Now we are going to pray. This is the season of the rain. Hallelujah. And you are going to speak over your life. Remember I told us that God is, God is changing the dimensions and the levels of people. You must say amen to it in your life.
and you are going to pray there are all kinds of encumbrances that have mocked the integrity of God upon our lives it's time to challenge it right now you are going to speak whatever area mention it and speak if it's marriage say it it must happen if it's your finances pray the wisdom the strategy the grace lift your voice and pray from glory to glory Shalom you're welcome in this place Shalom 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 Shalom, Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom, Shalom, hey, you're welcome in this place. Shalom, Jehovah, Shalom, Shalom, you're welcome in this place. Shalom. Unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh and this is the confidence we have in him that when we pray he heareth us it is within his power to grant us a request hallelujah listen I want you to begin to walk with this consciousness I am part of the ecclesia there is only one way the counsel of God can happen in the earth the church only there are not many options the church is the strategy the church is the force that will conquer Babylon so I want you to know that whatever it takes for God to demonstrate his might in the church he will do it he will do it for his name's sake he will do it for his name's sake walk in that consciousness it pays God in every way to bring breakthrough to your family it pays God in every way to make his word come to pass in your life the question is to what degree are you willing to partner with him both in principle and in prayer hallelujah I've made up my mind that in my life and in my time the counsel of God must come to pass fully 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 hallelujah there are people here before I just pray for all of us there are people here right now you have a desire to live for God and to serve God but as it is you are still operating in the government of the Antichrist and God is calling you to make your ways right and in a very unambiguous way declare your allegiance he said choose ye this day choose ye this day it is within your power you may not be able to change your life by yourself but you can make that decision there are people inside and outside right now hallelujah and as I make this call I want you to find your way and come is our joy and pleasure to welcome you the victorious family because Babylon is falling I guarantee you Babylon is falling every system that is not of God will fail when all is said and done Christ will still be seated upon his throne as the king and the church will stand victoriously wherever you are you need to make it right with God or rededicate your life make your way to the front right now God bless you don't wait for anybody inside and outside it's time to declare your allegiance. Choose ye this day. Choose ye this day. Whom you will serve. He said, but as for me and my house. As for me and my house. 
there's nothing to be ashamed of. Don't let the devil cheat you. Win that war of destiny. It's time to make it right. For God so loved you, he gave his one and only begotten son. No matter what you have done, no matter what the story is, make your way. Make your way and let him give you a new beginning. No matter how far, keep coming. Koinonia, celebrate them. Keep coming. Hallelujah. Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your ways. That's what you're here to declare. Oh, oh yes, Lord. I will obey. Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your way. Oh, oh, oh yes, Lord. Oh, yes. Listen, when you come to Jesus, part of what happens to you is He supplies the grace. You cannot help yourself, but you can choose to authorize Him to your life. Now, look up, please. Don't be emotional about the decision you are making because it's a serious decision. Are you getting me? As I lead you through this prayer, I want you to know that grace will be supplied. Lift your right hand high to heaven and say after me from the depth of your heart, you're not reciting a point. Say, Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart. I declare that I believe in you. Tonight, I have heard your word and I declare that there be a translation from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. Right now, I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that Jesus is my Lord and my Savior and my King. From now and henceforth, I denounce sin and Satan I denounce the way of the flesh and I declare that Jesus is my Lord. Now let me pray for you. Father, see these hands that are lifted. A public declaration of their allegiance to your government. This is why you died. I pray that you supply upon them the grace it will take to live victorious. I cause the power of sin over your life. In the name of Jesus, may you join this great army that will crumble Babylon. May you join this great army that will be envoys of his presence. May you join this great army that will be witnesses for his majesty. That at the end of your life, may he say, well done, good and faithful servant. I pray for you that everything that lures you to the way of the world, grace is supplied upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you for this great decision. Now, I'd like you to just follow the lady waving her hands. There's someone waving her hands or there's a gentleman waving his hands. Just follow him. They'll have your details in one minute and you'll be back. Celebrate them, Koinonia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please join me as we celebrate those who are worshipping with us for the first time. If this is your first time inside and outside, we love and honor you. Please make your way to the front. God bless you. We want to welcome you and speak a word of blessing. Come on, Koinonia, celebrate them. Celebrate them. God bless you. God bless you. Abba, Koinonia, this is not your best. No matter how far, make your way to the front. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. hallelujah thank you so much thank you so much for coming god bless you we really appreciate you and we honor you every one of you praise god this is koinonia a meeting put together by eternity network international we are here every friday and i assure you your life will never be the same jesus brought you here to bless you and to lift you you will return back with a new hunger a new grace and you will find out that you begin to experience multiple breakthroughs in your life hallelujah we are anointed and when we pray for you things happen we want to pray for you right now and we want you to believe saints of god stretch your hands and prophesy 
in the name of Jesus. We speak over your life and your destiny. May you know that you met God tonight in the name of Jesus. We plant a deep hunger in you for spiritual things. We declare that you will experience all sorts of breakthroughs in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord honor you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. We declare that you will move from glory to glory. Whatever challenge you came here with, we declare that it ends in your life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for these ones. We love and we honor them. Thank you for bringing them. We truly, truly appreciate you for bringing them. Let their lives change. Give them testimonies in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you once again for coming. Please, I'd just like you to follow the ushers just in one minute. They'll welcome you more warmly on our behalf. They'll just have your details and you'll be back. Immediately after the service, I'll wait just for a few minutes um, just to see one or two people since they'll not be counseling on Monday. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Celebrate them as they go. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.